Wags, we're happy to have you because we've talked about this. The mm-hmm. Mental Health Minute today is probably one of the biggest things, and it all ties into the stuff we've, we've talked about as resiliency. You know, they a, a lot of people in the military talk about it. They're like, well, you got to be a resilient force. But then we don't really talk about how or why or what it means. And I like to think about it. Doug, you can chime in as our resident expert if you're still with us. I haven't heard you in a while. I hope you're okay. Um, it's like a rubber band, right? So, you know, if you stretch the rubber band too much, it pops. If you stretch it a lot over time, it's going to fatigue and fail. And it's just like resiliency. You can bounce back a little bit at a time, but if you try to bounce back too much from too big of a thing without talking to people, unloading some of that baggage, it will, over time, drag you down. And as far as my career, I think everybody in this chat has a story of resiliency. Uh, Mine most recently, you know, we talked about the air show thing. I'm obviously, I'm not flying fighters anymore. That was very tough. Having lost dogs, family members and stuff. A lot of these things over time will wear you down and they have worn me down. But what I did when this stuff comes up is I rely on friends. Uh, You know, you talk to people, you talk to uh, a lot of squadrons now have mental health counselors that you can go talk to Uh, just in your daily life. If you've got a core group of friends that can be that support network and even going outside of that, but you can't keep that all inside because eventually the rubber band pops and you know we we always talk about well we got to be resilient but the key in all of this is allowing yourself to decompress and allow yourself to take that load off before it becomes too much and just taking it one piece at a time you know if you get into a situation even flying where you're overwhelmed well i busted this ride i failed a check ride whatever the resiliency is figuring out how we correct it the next time and talking to our squadron mates and going, look, you know, I didn't fail because I was a bad pilot. I failed because I had a bad flight and I'm going to overcome that, um, you know, in the next time. So around the room, Wags, you're our, our mostest guest. I know we, we talked about that. What do you have for resiliency? So, um, like I mentioned, I think earlier, uh, back in high school, I had a uh, pole vaulting injury that left me a paraplegic, uh, meaning I could not walk. And, you know, I, I think it's safe to say probably the toughest thing I've gone through. And for me, as you were touching on uh, Mover, a big part that got me through it was family and friends. And the support, but I think equally, particularly for family, of not wanting to let people down, of you know being that example, and you know being the best person I could. I think another part, at least for me, was focusing on all the things I still did have, which was quite a bit. Uh, you know, particularly if you look at comparatives of how difficult things can be for a lot of people in this world that didn't have the privileges that I did growing up. It's kind of hard to really focus on the negative when you have so much positive out there. So I think for me, um, those allowed me to, you know, never fall into a depression or feel sorry for myself, but instead take it as, okay, it happened. How do I make the best of this moving forward? And like I said, you know, I really, you know, one thing I wanted to do growing up was fly jets. That wasn't going to happen. So did the next best thing, applied to work CIA, worked on jets, went to Top Gun, lots of time at Nellis working with fighter crews at Red Flag and got to do some really cool things that maybe I never would have got to do if I did end up flying. So life has a way of working out sometimes too. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. And look at all the the good you've done. I mean, how many people have you inspired to become fighter pilots just mm-hmm. from DCS? I mean, that's yeah. that's amazing. Gonky, what do you got, man? Yeah, <clears throat> just to you know add to that, it's really about like Wags. You're saying it's really perspective, right? So, I mean, it's it's not always what happens to you; it's how how you react to it. And I mean, I don't. I never had anything as traumatic as that happened to me, but I mean, it sounds like that's exactly what you've done. And, and, you know, throughout life, you know, that's, that's how I look at life um, perspective. Cause there's, there's always, there's always blessings in your life. You know, there's, there's little blessings you don't even notice yeah. 
you know, every single day. I mean, living in Florida and being able to keep the temperature at like comfortable levels, right? I mean, we take that for granted. So yeah, come to Phoenix. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. But yeah, just perspective and then obviously family and friends. Um, and I know, you know, like being on uh, deployment and stuff and Wombat could probably talk about this a little bit better, but you know, so, sometimes you don't have your family with you. And, you know, that's when, you know, we had, uh, we had like psychologists and we had therapists and stuff on the boat that we could talk to as well. And, you know, rough and tough fighter pilots don't talk about touchy feely things like that. Right. But no, but you have to be mature enough to just know, like, I gotta go talk to somebody before this gets out of hand. So um, yeah, that's what I have to add. I mean, chaplain, perspective. Don't yeah, forget. chaplain. Yeah, I don't I, forget I, the chaplain. In fact, yeah. I want to shout out uh, my new job, Captain Latham, the chaplain. He's uh, if I walked in, he's like, "Oh my God, you're mover!" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh no, 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 not here, not here. No, I'm just, I'm not." He's like, "Oh, can I, can I get a picture?" I was like, "Okay, but <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not that guy. I'm not. I promise you, I'm not that guy. You know, it's. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. So I, I thought it was really cool and." Appreciate you watching the channel and he's leaving us. So good luck and you know, your next, your next assignment. So, yeah. uh, really, really cool. Wombat. I, I could really echo, um, a, a little bit of all of it. Um, I mean, Wags, your story to me is inspirational. Um, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I volunteer a little bit and I want to do it more with a, a group of, um, veterans wake for warriors that, that takes wounded vets and teaches them how to wakeboard and wake surf. And it's a really cool thing to see because you, you have these, these individuals to their family before they went on deployment. Um, you know, they were, they were larger than life, right? They were the moms and dads and whatever injuries they got over there. And it's everything from, you know, visible to not visible to loss of limbs to everything. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've watched their children sitting on a boat when mom or dad who doesn't walk is out there surfing behind the boat and, you know, they look like superheroes and it's such a cool thing. So, um, nothing I've gone through can, can hold a candle to that. Um, the, the two things that I, that I think about are, you know, and, and Mover and Gonky know about this and, and I don't talk about it a ton, but in my first squadron, um, and I can really tell you how much the friends and the people around you make a big difference. Um, so in the first squadron, uh, I was married, found out on deployment that I was getting a divorce, which is probably not the most ideal place to find out you're getting a divorce. And my squadron, I mean, they were, they were better than, I want to say better than family. I love my family and my parents are great, but I mean, they came together and it was the only reason I got through it. And, and I actually chose after I realized there was nothing I could do to fix the marriage, I chose to stay on deployment because they were closer to me than anything I was going to go home to. Um, and it made it bearable. And I mean, I, I flew with a crew 24 hours in the Hawkeye. I know it's a Hawkeye, but bear with me 24 hours after finding out I was getting a divorce into combat. And, and I looked at that crew and, and the one thing that I will say about the Hawkeye is there's a lot of personal pride as far as bringing your crew back. You know, we can't mid-air refuel at the time. We can't eject. I mean, you don't have a lot of options. And I looked at every one of those crew members and I go, guys, if you don't think I'm ready for this, I'm out. I won't do this flight. And every one of them said, no way, we'll fly with you anywhere. And it really spoke because I was dealing with kind of like what you referred to, like wags with the letting people down. You know, I, I'm getting a divorce. I mean, my parents... <laughs> are still together. They'll laugh at this, you know, maybe not always the best, but they're still together, you know? And so I was a failure in my mind, you know, mm -hmm. growing up as a, as a, as a Catholic guy, um, you know, I'm like, man, I, I let everybody down and, and that camaraderie. And then when you fast forward to my Hornet time and I dealt with my medical issue, which, which ultimately almost killed me, it was like, I had a plague, like the squadron. I mean, there's maybe two or three people in that squadron that I even still talk to because they all turned their back on me and something that shouldn't have nearly been, I mean, it was medical pilots have medical issues all the time and something that really shouldn't have been anything to turn your back on. And I felt so freaking alone on that ship. I mean, the days from my last landing in the Hornet to when I finally left the ship, which was only a few days later, 
was some of the hardest times I've ever been deployed because I felt so damn alone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's where when I think of resiliency and when I think of, you know, it goes all the way back to, you know, stories like yours and stories like I see with Wake for Warriors and the things that I post on social media and stuff like that. You know, it's all fun and games and making fun of each other and having a good time and the camaraderie and and writing books and being the next Airbus, you know, Airbus for you. And I mean, all that's fun. But like when I write this stuff, I think back on those days and I'm like, if I can do anything, I never want somebody to feel as alone as I did. You know, so that's the reason now with while well be it like it's a small social media presence i'll admit that but it's a social media presence and like my wife will tell me now and and she's awesome and she'll be like are you are you still answering messages and i'm like i'm gonna answer them until they're all answered i'm going to do that extra effort because i know the only way to get through it the only way to bounce back the only way you know, the whole never down, never out thing of just keep moving forward and you can get through anything, things that you never, ever, ever believe you can get through is by having the people around you to have your back. And if I can be that for somebody, then, uh, then that's awesome, you know, and, and that's an honor. And I, I don't take that lightly, but I think that truly is, you know, I agree with mover and what you're saying, as far as like, you can, you can bend, but don't break. And you have to, at some point, let the steam valve off and, you can't go forever because eventually you'll just self-destruct. But there's a lot. I mean, people, we as, as a society and as a human being, we are far more resilient than I think anybody really gives themselves credit for um, because it's too easy to not be. It's too easy to be like, oh, I can't do it or this is too tough. Or, and it's like you have most people have no idea how tough too tough is. I mean, and, and I don't think I even really know. Um and it's, it's amazing that power that we have as human beings to not only within ourselves, but to affect other people uh, and to bring them stronger. And I've seen it firsthand. And to me, that's the ultimate, you know, when it comes to resiliency is, is taking care of yourself, but taking care of those around you, taking care of people, taking care of others is what we're all about as humans. I know we fight. I know we we talk about UAPs and joke or tell mover that air force people don't really deploy, which is mostly true. But the, the, the reality of it is it's, it's helping everybody. That's what makes the world go around. And if we don't have that, we don't have anything. I mean, we just don't. And that to me is what sticks to me with resiliency. You know, it's funny. You mentioned the Hornet stuff because it reminded me of something that I probably wanted to forget. But when my dad died in 2013, uh, did you say let it go? No, I said way to go, Wombat. Yeah, well, oh. I have a knack. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, no, seriously, you know, you never, you feel alone. Gonk, you weren't in the squadron at the time. Um, the one person when my dad died called me from VFA 204. It was Bucky. He was the only person that called and said, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Everybody else in the squadron could not care less. Like, in fact, the other, only other call I got was, when are you going to be the next dead OIC? Like, that was the support that I got. So, and that was the hardest time of my life. I mean, mm-hmm. or one of, I mean, things obviously, you know, sometimes are worse, but <laughs> that was a tough time for me because, you know, it's my second, losing the second parent, you know, I have a special needs brother, world had just collapsed around me. Sure. Um, but it's interesting that you have those one or two people that are just there. And when I went through the stuff, you know, that uh, st- arguably still ongoing, but in the last year, you know, two people, Gonky and Wombat, you know, and, and Deuce, who's, who's not on the channel, you know, th- there was a very small group of people that were there because when you 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 feel so alone, especially when it's something, and I know Wombat, you know this, but when they're coming after you and you feel like you're being attacked and there's nobody around to circle the wagons with you, that is a horrible, horrible feeling. So that's not really, I mean, I guess it is resiliency because I'm still sitting here and we're all still sitting here and, and wags I'll never, you know, I mean, dude, that's, I, I, we can never understand, you know, what you've gone through. But I mean, the fact that you're here today to be able to tell your story and also be proud of what you've accomplished to that end of sharing your dream of being a fighter pilot with the rest of the world. How many is it? It's got to be millions of users of DCS, huh? I mean, you guys have yeah. 
like yeah i mean so you've you've it's done well you've shared it with so many people that otherwise would never know because gonky i mean we talk about it i mean it's the closest you can get you know yeah. sitting it's in your living machine. room yeah it's awesome well, and I'll, I'll say it flat out wags i mean i know we just met but you've done more in my opinion for fighter pilots and military combat aviation than any fighter pilot or person that was involved in military combat. I mean, there's, there's what you've done. I mean, the, the sheer numbers of it statistically, like, I don't care who you are. I mean, and I've, I've met guys that, you know, we did the the interview with nasty Manazra. I mean, that guy had a, a stellar career and seemed like he did everything. I mean, but the amount of people he affected was nowhere near what you have. And mm-hmm. so it's weird how life works that way. It's mm-hmm. obviously, you know, given the choice, it's probably not the direction you would have chosen before it happened. But it's obviously the path you were supposed to be on, and yeah. the fact that you know, worked out is pretty pretty damn cool. I mean, that's yeah. Well, I, I think you made a really good point too, Wombat. That people are a lot more resilient than they give themselves credit for, and I think the vast majority of folks out there were confronted with something like paraplegia. They're a lot stronger than they give themselves credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, you awesome. don't know what you can handle until you're forced to handle it. Pretty much. It's just the yeah. Reality of it. But yeah, you know, like I said earlier, uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, a lot of it is, you know, my own selfishness of wanting to create experience that, you know, allows me to to do thing I wanted to do before. Yeah. And I don't know. If selfish the way, is the right word, right. though. I mean, it's you're you're a good person. I mean, I could see that immediately, right? I mean, and it's yeah, it's what you wanted to do, but I mean it's also a giving back, you know, I mean, I could selfishly say I want to be the Airbus and DCS and that's why I started writing books, but <laughs> oh, no way, no, that might be the reason. So, I mean, it's just, well, it's just who you are. It's, it's your human nature. So let's say uh, real, real quick, seriously though, um, whatever you're going through, this is for everybody, especially somebody might be watching this and thinking, you know, Hey, I'm going through a lot right now. I will always say this and I'm going to keep harping on it. Don't make a temporary problem permanent. You know, talk to somebody, the suicide hotline. There are local uh, resources available. You know, here we've got uh, resources here in St. Tammany Parish. The sheriff's office has resources. Call somebody, even if it's 911, but call somebody. I mean, I've been on hundreds of, you know, suicide attempt calls. And I'd rather be there on the attempt than on the actual death scene. Because I've been on those too, and they suck. So uh, the resiliency, you know, even if you're at your limit, there's light on the other side. So please, you know, don't don't make a temporary problem permanent. And it'll be permanent not just for you, but for everybody around you, because somebody does care and somebody will be hurt. Yeah. 